black smoke coming out of Tower One. I'm a safety engineer. First thing I think of, some dumb contractor probably started a fire. I didn't know what else to think. And our people came down from the 36th floor. We had a little portion of 35. And they said, let's evacuate. We don't know what's going on. So everybody went back to their desks. Now, you have to understand, this is New York. Hours are like basically nine to five. You don't show up for work early, you show up for work at nine o'clock. So most people were not, not in their towers, they were not at their offices yet. A lot of the folks in Canada Fitzgerald and all those financial trading places, yes, they were there. That's why they were early, and that's why they lost so many people. The majority of the New Yorkers probably who were still across the street getting a bagel, getting a coffee, getting a newspaper, getting something else. Doggone terrorists, I wouldn't say the word damn, but that's all right. Uh, if they had struck at quarter after nine, God forbid, we would have lost probably 20, 30,000 personnel that day. All right. So we weren't going to evacuate. We started, I packed up my stuff. We started to walk down the stairs. The only announcement that they made in Tower 2 that day in the stairwell, there's a fire condition in Tower 1. Tower 2 is secure you may return to your office. Everybody says, oh my God, why did they say that? It's called shelter in place. People were running out from Tower 2 in panic. They were running towards Tower 1. People were jumping at that point from Tower 1. They were coming down. Debris was still falling. People were literally getting killed on the ground by falling bodies. FDNY, NYPD made a command decision. They said, please, stay inside, let us figure out what the devil is going on here because we have no idea what's going on here. At that point, I was about 31st floor, I turned around, my friend Adam, I said, Adam, let's get out of here, let's go back up. Literally walked into somebody's office, walked over to the elevators, hit the elevator button, still functional, went up to 36, see you later, walked down to 35, got back to my desk, picked up the phone, Call my wife, she's here in the crowd, my grandkids and everybody today. Said, sweetheart, I'm back on my desk and that's when she saw the plane on TV, strike tower two, my phone went dead. Now I'm down here, the plane struck at about 78. She didn't know that. And when that plane struck, I'm standing there and it went like this and it went like this and then it stopped. And then the ceiling tiles fell down, the lights went out and everything just stopped. And at that point, I said, that doesn't feel good. And I've been asked, what did I think was going on? And honestly, what I felt, knowing what was going on in Tower 1, that there was some kind of fire, I don't know why, but I thought literally Tower 1 was falling into Tower 2. I, I have no idea where I got that impression from. But that's what I felt. And then I just calmly picked up my stuff and I said, I'm out of here. And I went back to Stairwell B. And Stairwell B, I will tell you right now, there was no panic. There was no screaming, there was no yelling. Nor, unfortunately, did we, not, we did not see any firefighters come up our stairwell. Yes, they were coming up, trying to rescue people. We did not see any. I probably got out of, downstairs, maybe about maybe 9.29, 30 or so. We went downstairs, Port Authority and YPD ushered us out. We came out at five. We walked up, I walked up Fulton Street, 
went to my barber shop, believe it or not, and called my wife, and she's yelling and screaming at me. She'll tell you that right now. She's right here. Where the hell have you been? I said, I think there's something going on in Manhattan, and I don't know what it is. But uh, she said, you coming home? I said, yeah. And I went up to Penn Station, and I tried to get on a train. And at 10 o'clock, they said, Penn Station is being evacuated. That's when Tower 1 fell. From the first moment that that plane struck Tower 1 to the time that Tower 1 collapsed, it was 102 minutes. That's all it took. And if you watch Tower 2, it was the second one to get hit and the first one to fall. And it just goes pop, 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 and it's less than 10 seconds. Watch all the documentaries. You can't count that high. The reason, part of the reason that we're here at this level, right here, right now, today, is because number seven, World Trade Center, was the last of the World Trade Center buildings to literally collapse after all that destruction. It is also the first one to be rebuilt to show that we still are strong and America is still strong and we will continue to be strong and we will continue to fight against terrorism. And when you came down the West Side Highway this morning, that big glass building that you see going up, which we're finally able to show you guys, because every year you ask what's going on in New York, that's the Freedom Tower, folks. That's going up. It's way up there now. It's well over 60 stories high. And it's going up more and more and stronger and stronger every day. Uh, that's basically, that's, that's my story. That's what I did that day. And I, I tell people, I said, um, I just went to work that day. And people ask me, what's the most moving thing that happened that day? By the time I got home that night, about 6.30 at night, I'm going to try to hold it together. I don't know if I can. Um, I have a flagpole in front of my house. And it's been there for many, many years. And it'll continue to be there for many more years. And I came around the corner. And I just stared straight at my house. And my son was in the crowd right there. He had my flag at half staff. I think that's when it really hit me. And that, that just lost it. I just lost it. But that, 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 thank you. Carnegie Deli, we just came back from our September 11th run. Um, you know, Larry and I have been going to September 11th to the um, uh, memorial down there since shortly after the attacks. So we've seen a lot of changes. And um, some, thank you, some, uh, it's been a long time coming. And uh, how do I feel today? You know, a lot of ways I feel happy. And I feel sad though. And, um, but I feel optimistic. I do. I feel optimistic. Even with all the craziness that's going on in the world, when I take a look at all the good things that are going on down there, you know, it makes me feel good. But uh, as I walk around, I see the t-shirts. And people wear t-shirts with sayings on them about September 11th and their feelings about September 11th. And there are two things I know that will never happen from reading those shirts. One thing is they say never forget. And I don't never have to be reminded about never forgetting. I'll never forget. And uh, 
But I did see another shirt that was very upset, and it said, forgive. And uh, I'm just not that worldly of a guy right now. And so right now, I'm going to have to leave the forgiving to someone else to do. But right now, me and Larry, we're here at Carnegie Deli. I'm about to have uh, my cardiac sandwich, and God bless America.